In 1987, martial arts and arcade games were far from commonplace. Now sure, there were a couple of big games such as Karate Champ and VR Kung Fu but for the most part they really weren't widespread just yet. Enter arcade manufacturer Sega who had been around since the 1960s but were far from the video game giant they would become. Today the game we are talking about blends together action, suspense, and a nice little story to tie it all together. No, I'm not talking about Kalare Kun Mogoranian. I'm talking about Shinobi, the run and gun ninja masterpiece from Sega. What arcade game had an influence on the style of this game? What changes were made to the game when it was released on the PS3 and Xbox 360? So grab your ninja stars and get ready to fight, because this is the history of Shinobi, part one. The year is 1987 and Sega R&D planner Noriyoshi Oba is working on his next arcade game. Mr. Oba has worked on a number of popular Sega arcade games including Wonder Boy and Monster Land, Panzer Dragoon for the Saturn, and Streets of Rage. He was a fan of the popular anime-styled run-and-gun Namco arcade game Rolling Thunder, which allowed you to jump between two sections of the same level. At the time, martial arts films were all the rage in North America and he wanted to implement this into his game. Sega also liked to westernize certain games and this one was no different. The first level takes place in what appears to be New York City. Posters of Marilyn Monroe hang on the walls and a certain red and blue wall crawler can be seen which opened up the relationship between Sega and Marvel. Shinobi was released in 1987 by Sega. You take on the role of Joe Musashi as he attempts to take down the evil organization Zed who have kidnapped the children of the world leaders. The controls are fairly simple with an attack button, a jump button, and a ninjutsu or ninja magic button as well. This clears all the enemies off the screen. Your primary method of attack is an unlimited supply of shurikens, but you also have a close attack which allows you to punch or kick your enemy. This is also a one hit wonder world so if you are shot then you die on the spot. It is possible to bump into your enemies without dying as long as you're not hit by any projectiles or any punches. There are various kids you have to rescue on each of the levels before you can proceed. After rescuing certain children, your character is powered up and your throwing stars are replaced with more powerful bullets. Your close range attacks become a katana to give your enemies a little slice and dice. You can do a slow crouch walk to avoid enemy attacks. You can also jump between the higher and the lower floors similar to Rolling Thunder. You have three types of ninja magic available depending on which stage you are on. The game takes place across five levels with each one having between three or four stages in each. There is also a boss fight at the end of each level. The five levels are New York City. The Docks, a cave, a training camp for ninjas, and finally the last boss which is in a mansion. It is possible to continue your game if you lose all of your lives except on the very last level. At that point, once you lose all of your lives, the game is over. In between levels are the bonus stages which sees you throwing ninja stars from a first person perspective. The goal is to take out all of the ninjas before they reach you. If you are successful, you receive an extra life. If you manage to complete a level without using any ninja magic, you will receive a 5,000 point bonus. The gameplay is truly intense, but in a good way. 
The playability is tuned just perfectly, but it does get a little bit too hard, a little bit too fast. There were a number of home conversions available with the home computer ports being done by the sales curve. The first one we are looking at is the MS-DOS version. Coming at you in either 4 or 16 spectacular colors, the game is a scrolling herky-jerky mess. While the sprites are a decent size, the animation leaves a lot to be desired. Along with the most basic of graphics and animation, you get sound via the internal PC speaker, which sounds absolutely terrible. The controls of the game are too bad if you can get past the rest of the poor presentation. The Spectrum port is up next and upon first glance it doesn't look that good. Once you start to play it though, you'll realize that looks aren't everything. Which is what all of my previous girlfriends have told me. Now even though there is a definite lack of consistent color going on, the sprites are large and resemble the arcade game. The speed of the game is pretty much consistent with the arcade original. The only time the speed tends to slow down is when you are jumping up or down between sections of a level. The way your body is twisted, it looks like you are passing gas as you are floating up or down. There is a nice rendition of the arcade theme while you play along with basic sound effects. You only have one fire button so a separate key has to be assigned to jump between sections of a level. This is a really good conversion especially considering the limited 8-bit hardware. The Amstrad version is up next and it's a pretty good attempt. The colors are nice and vibrant and the sprites are large and somewhat detailed. Not only do you get music while you play, but there is also some digitized speech sprinkled throughout. Despite only having one fire button, the controls are nice. The only downside I could find was that due to the height of the platform, it makes it difficult to see the enemies that are up there. Otherwise, it's a pretty good conversion. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and right from the get-go it received high praise in the reviews. While the sprites are large, they are not very detailed. The colors are also dark and murky, which unfortunately hurts the overall presentation. The animation and scrolling though is silky smooth. The gameplay is fast and very close to the arcade original. There is also an excellent tune that plays in the title screen and it sounds great. There is no music during gameplay, but we do get nice sound effects. Once again, we only have one fire button, so sacrifices had to be made. It's an excellent conversion despite the control issue. Coming up next is the Sega Master System port and it's really good. The first thing you notice at the top of the screen is a health bar so now you are allowed up to three hits before you die. This was added for all the pansies out there who couldn't handle the one hit death, and I include myself in that group. This makes the game so much easier. Another change to the game is that you don't have to rescue every hostage before you proceed to the next level. However, if you don't then you can't partake in the bonus levels. While the sprites are not as large as other versions, they are nicely drawn with fairly smooth animation and scrolling. A nice rendition of the music plays in the background and it sounds pretty good. This time around we have two fire buttons which greatly enhances the gameplay and makes it feel more like the arcade game. Overall though, this is an excellent version for Sega's 8-bit hardware. And now we come to a bit of an oddity. A Sega Arcade Classic on a Nintendo system? 
Who would have thunk it? Thanks to the masterminds at Tengen, we have Shinobi running on 8-bit Nintendo hardware. Rather than port the actual arcade game, for some strange reason they decided to port the Sega Master System version instead. This includes the life bar as well as not having to rescue all of the hostages. Unfortunately, this is an inferior port to the SMS version. While the colors are not as dark as the Commodore port, they are not quite as vibrant as the Sega version. The sprites appear to have been shrunk down in size and have lost some of their detail. The sound effects and music are also subpar. The controls are okay, especially considering we have two buttons on the NES controller. This was more of a curiosity than anything else. The Atari ST version is the first of the 16-bit ports we are going to look at. While the sprites are large and detailed, the colors are very muddy. Once again, we only have one fire button which greatly hinders the gameplay. The speed of the game is also a bit of an issue, running at about 75% of the arcade game. The scrolling is also very choppy. We do have music while you play, but unfortunately the tunes don't sound that great. We do get a little bit of sampled speech from the arcade game. The conversion overall is only average at best. Next up is the Amiga version and it's a big improvement over the Atari ST. The speed of the game is just a little bit faster, but unfortunately the scrolling is still a bit too choppy. It is better than the Atari ST, but not anywhere near as smooth as other versions. Another improvement is the inclusion of parallax scrolling in the background. We get more sample speech and excellent music that plays while you play. The gameplay is good even with only one fire button. When I first got this game from my Amiga back in the day, I was always curious what the bosses would look like especially considering the computer was a graphical powerhouse. Unfortunately, it appears they have been shrunk down, especially the first boss. Overall though, this is an excellent conversion. I just wish the scrolling was a tad bit smoother. Up next is the PC Engine version and is fantastic despite a few shortcomings. Developer Asmic did an excellent job and should be commended. The graphics look very close to the arcade game with silky smooth gameplay and animation. The speed of the game is on par with the arcade original and looks and feels great. There is also music while we play and it sounds fantastic. The only downside is that there are no more short range attacks and no time limit. They also removed the bonus stages as well as level 2 entirely. The controls feel great and we have two buttons to use this time around. Check it out if you are a fan of Shinobi and are curious what the PC Engine can do. And finally, we come to the last conversion on our list, which is the MSX version. Now, if you had an appreciation and a sense of love for the Spectrum port, but felt it was just way too fast, then this is the game for you. This is straight up a Spectrum port, and it's about as slow as a queef on a Sunday. The animation and scrolling is extremely choppy. You get only a few sound effects throughout the entire game. Once again, there is only one fire button, so sacrifices were made. I always try to find something positive to say in all of these conversions, so let me think about that. Well, at least it comes in a nice case. The arcade version has been released on the Xbox Live and PlayStation Networks, but changes were made. All pop culture references were removed, such as the Marilyn Monroe posters and all of the famous bosses including Spider-Man, Terminator, Godzilla, and Batman. 
And that wraps up part one of the history of Shinobi. I was going to try to cram this all into a 20 or 25 minute video, but felt I couldn't do justice to all of the games in the series, so I decided to split this up into two videos. In the next couple of days, I'll be posting part two, so be on the lookout for it. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you so much for watching.